Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Prophet from Prophets, where prophecy speaks and prosperity follows. No, I'm not a prophet, nor am I the son of a prophet, but I believe in the prophets. And the prophets are important, because without the prophets, we would not know what God has in store for us. And we need to know that, because things are getting very strange out there, aren't they? The world is becoming a very different place than what it was even a few years ago. And I believe we are rapidly coming to this final scenes of this earth's history. Now this can be a bit scary and it can draw on people's hearts and it can be a bit of a weight sometimes. People can think about the fear and the, the persecutions and destructions that are coming that are already here in some places. But friends, I want you to know that Jesus is with us. Jesus loves us. And Jesus is going to get us through this. More than that. More than that. Because what we're going to have as a reward at the end is an eternal bliss with our Lord. And we will have no more tears, no more death, and no more crying. Would you say amen to that? I say amen to that. But before we get into today's particular lesson, today's focus, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, give us wisdom to understand between the difference between truth and error. Grant us your power. Grant us your mercy. Help us to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, friends, the subject this week is, <laughs> is Donald Trump the Antichrist? The Bible truth will shock you. Now, you may be wondering, Marco, why are you covering such a topic? Well, the thing is, is that there are people that believe that Donald Trump is the Antichrist or the fourth beast right is Donald Trump the Antichrist now this is according to this particular author's this isn't my opinion but this is this author's opinion of the man Donald Trump's lies and rhetoric feed off people's worst fears to spread hate racism misogyny Islamophobia unabashed bigotry and discrimination and how that rhetoric coincides point for point with the prophecies regarding the Antichrist with frightening accuracy really I didn't know that the Antichrist was going to be a misogynist I didn't know he was going to be an Islamophobe or he was going to be a bigot, I don't think, or a racist. No, I don't think I read that about the Antichrist, but we're going to see a little bit more. So what else does he say? By presenting clear and concise parallels, Mr. Mulhauser encourages readers to engage in a conversation and further research and to answer them for themselves the question, is Donald Trump the Antichrist? Well, we're going to do some of that research, Mr. Mulhauser. And uh, see where you're at. I didn't read the book. I didn't read the book. Full disclosure, didn't read it. Don't need to. I don't need to because I can simply turn to the Bible and history and find out who the real Antichrist is. And that should give you a clue as to my opinion as to whether or not Donald Trump or even any political figure, any single American political figure or group of pol politicians is the Antichrist. All right? Let's see. What else is people saying? Uh, here he has 15 Bible verses identifying Trump as the Antichrist. Seven, over 700,000 views. And 12 more verses. Wow, this guy's finding verses about Trump all over the place. You know, I've read the Bible for, for many years now, and I've never seen anything about Trump. I don't see the word Trump. I don't see any allusions to him or to any other political figure with regards to their personage as being the Antichrist. So these are some pretty bold claims that they're making. So let's take a look a little bit. What does the word Antichrist mean? What does it mean? Antichrist is a Greek word from Antichristos, a name from anti plus Christos, right? So anti or against and then Christ. So anti means uh, against or instead of. It has, a, it has two meanings. It's either against or instead of. And Christos is the, the anointed one the Messiah or Jesus Christ. So the Antichrist in this context is one who stands in the place of Christ while at the same time must be against Christ. Okay, so anti is both against and instead of and the Antichrist is a, is a dual personage or is a personage rather that has a dual purpose. All right? They both stand in the place of Christ and yet are against Christ. And anyone who stands in the place of Christ is against Christ, because the only one who stands in the place of Christ is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the vicar of God. The Holy Spirit is the presence of Jesus in our hearts and in our lives. No one else. 
No one else. So that immediately should tell you something. Does Trump fit the previous characteristic, the previous definition, shall we say, of the Antichrist? The Antichrist must be one who takes the place of Christ and at the same time is against Christ. There is no evidence that Trump is taking the place of Jesus Christ. No one's praying to Trump. And if you are, stop it. Because <laughs> he isn't God. No political figure is God. No political figure is going to save you in this, brethren. Friends out there, I'm I'm not into party politics. Um, I will say that with regards to politics, no political figure is going to save you. Some of them may be of use to God on God's side, but many of them are of use to Satan on Satan's side. I leave you to figure out who's who. But there's no evidence that Trump is taking the place of Jesus Christ. Now this is, has to be this has to be not on a on a small scale. The Antichrist has to be on a big scale. Because the Antichrist is the one power that the world will eventually worship. The Antichrist comes under different names in Scripture. We're going to see some of the other names that, we, that he's been given. But it's not just a, a one-time political figure. And besides, this man, Trump, is not the president anymore. So if he's the Antichrist, he's not a very powerful one. Is he? He would have to specifically be taking the place of Christ on earth. He's not doing that. It's not enough that some people compare him to Christ. Yeah, there was a tweet. Somebody tweeted it, and they used this as, as evidence. As Christ was crucified and then rose again on the third day, so too will Donald Trump treated one right-wing lawyer. And that's the evidence that some people would like to use to say, see, he's Antichrist, because he's taking the place of Christ. Well, just because some right wing lawyer and or left wing lawyer or, or up wing or no wing lawyer doesn't matter what wing doesn't matter, right? Just because somebody says that Trump is going to rise again like the third day, just as Jesus did, that that's not saying that he is Christ. That's just comparing his political career is going to come back. But that's not saying the man is Christ, and that's not saying Trump is taking the place of Christ. See, people, people are in these in these videos that that uh, on YouTube or some of these books. They're taking things completely out of context. They're taking one little piece and saying, "Ah, there it is." When the Bible is exceedingly clear as to who the Antichrist is, exceedingly clear. So, does Trump fit the previous characteristic or definition of the word Antichrist? No. He is not against Christ. He's not standing in the place of Christ. Well, I don't know what's in his heart. Is he against Christ? I don't know. But openly, he's not. And he's not standing in the place of Christ. Where is the Antichrist in Scripture? Where is he? Well, let's go to 1 John 2.18. It says, little children, it is the last time. So it's the, the, the last days, okay? And as you have heard that any Christ shall come, even now are there many any Christs, whereby we know that it is the last time. So in John's time, there were many antichrists. Okay? Who is a liar? In 1 John 2.22, who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. That's interesting. The Antichrist denies the Father and the Son. 1 John 4, 3 And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world. So the spirit of Antichrist was already in the days of John. Well, that seems to disqualify a lot of people. But that's the spirit now. That's the spirit. The spirit of Antichrist. And he said there are many Antichrists. So Antichrist can be a group, and it can be a, a spiritual view, and it was already people in John's day. Now, those were many Antichrists, but there is a one singular Antichrist. We're going to get to that in a little bit. But the spirit of Antichrist was around already. So this precedes Trump by... Uh, about 2,000 years, roughly. So for many, for many deceivers are entered into the world 
and confess not that Jesus has come in the flesh, this is a deceiver and an antichrist. So, antichrist seems to have a particular theological view with regards to the Father and the Son, with regards to uh, Jesus coming in the flesh. So that's where antichrist is scripture. That's where the word antichrist appears. It's only in 1 John and 2 John. He's the only one that says the exact word. So let's take a look at the characteristics of of the Antichrist thus far that we've learned. So one who is both in the place of and against Christ. All right. There were already many Antichrists in John's day. The coming of Antichrist was a sign of the last time. The context of the last time is the second coming. Okay, so it's a sign of God's of Jesus' second coming, though we're going to get a little bit into that, that there's going to be another sign that has to happen before we really get to the point where we're close to the second coming. We're getting closer. There is a spirit of Antichrist present in John's day. Antichrist denies that Jesus is the Christ or the Messiah. Antichrist denies the relationship between the Father and the Son. And Antichrist denies that Jesus came in the flesh. All right? So what is another an a characteristic of Antichrist? Now, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be soon not shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. So the day of Christ, that's the second coming. So John was saying, we know that, that uh, the coming of the Antichrist is a sign of the day of Christ. But Paul is adding some more context to that. He's saying, let no man deceive you by any means, here in verse 3, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. So before the second coming, there has to come a falling away. And what does that mean, a falling away? Well, it's a falling away from Christianity. It's a falling away from the true Christian religion. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So the Antichrist is the man of sin, the son of perdition. It's another name for him. And he has to be revealed before the second coming who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, that's the very definition of Antichrist, or that is worshipped, so that as God he sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Again, that exactly fits the description of the Antichrist. Does Trump fit the previous characteristics that we've gone through? Antichrist must be one who takes the place of Christ, and at the same time is against Christ, and sits as God in the temple of God, claiming that he is God. Well, that disqualifies him. That disqualifies Trump from being the Antichrist. I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not sorry. I'm glad to say exactly that Donald Trump is not the Antichrist, nor any other political figure. John connects the Antichrist with specific doctrine of denying that Christ has come in the flesh. I haven't seen uh, Trump's treatise on, uh, on uh, the nature of God. I haven't read his uh, latest book on the nature of God. Have you? No, because he hasn't written one because he doesn't talk about it. He might have some private beliefs, but that doesn't make him the Antichrist. John says that even spirits, if they deny that Christ came in the flesh, they are Antichrist. So is it spirits? Well, we know that there's a spirit of Antichrist and that the, the main Antichrist in the world is Satan. And he is a spirit. He is a demonic spirit. But we're talking about the man of sin, the son of perdition. that has to be revealed First, there has to be a falling away from Christianity and a revelation of who the man of sin is. And we know who the man of sin is. I've done several videos regarding the man of sin. The links will be in the description below. So Antichrist, at least in John's day, can be multiple people, even spirits who hold false doctrines related to false views of the nature of Christ and deny the relationship between the Father and the Son. Well, in other words, anyone who holds these doctrines can be considered Antichrist. Right? Anyone who holds, any politician who talks about this like this can be called Antichrist. But I haven't read Trump's many books on, on Jesus and the life of Jesus and who Jesus was and who God is. I haven't read any of his books on that. I haven't read any really of his deep theological statements because he hasn't made any. You know, Trump does talk about Christians. He talks about Christianity. But on the surface level, like most politicians do. This does not mean that he is the Antichrist. No, he does not fit the previous characteristics. Now, one of these videos, 
a timestamp 206. I'm not going to give this person um, these videos. I'm not going to give them much notoriety because they're ridiculous. But on timestamp 206, they compare Revelation 13.2 and Daniel 7.4. And they're saying that the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. So they're saying, ah, Trump is the lion. And therefore, uh, this is the spirit that he has and he is connected to the Antichrist. Well, that's ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. And then they'll put a picture up of Trump and a lion. And say, see, he speaks like he's like a lion. That's not how you do Bible prophecy. That's not how you do it. This is how you do Bible prophecy. First, you have to turn to Daniel 2. Because Daniel 2 is a framework prophecy. Daniel 2 gives us all the information that we need from the days of the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, right to the second coming. Everything has to fit in Daniel 2. It begins with the king of Babylon. It ends with the second coming. Okay, let's read a little bit of what it says in Daniel 2 for those that are not familiar. Daniel is speaking to King Nebuchadnezzar and he's relating to King Nebuchadnezzar the dream that he has had. And Daniel says, he's interpreting the dream now that King Nebuchadnezzar had. Thou, O king, sawest and behold a great image, this great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and, and the form thereof was terrible. That is, it was a very impressive dream. This image head was of fine gold, the breast and his arms of silver, his belly and thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image on the feet that were of iron and clay, and brake them to pieces. So, here's a statue. This is what the king saw. King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, and he couldn't remember the dream, and Daniel was given the understanding of the dream by God and Daniel comes to the king and says I'm going to give you the dream and the interpretation you can read this all in Daniel 2 and Daniel has now just described the dream there's a big statue that the king sees and there's a head of gold the statue has arms and chest of silver belly and thighs of brass two legs of iron the feet are part of iron and part of clay and during the time of the feet is when a stone without hands comes from heaven and smashes the whole thing up okay so this in this framework prophecy daniel said to king nebuchadnezzar in the interpretation thou art this head of gold and after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee and another third kingdom of brass which shall bear rule over all the earth and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron so this is about kingdom that's the march of nations it, daniel is describing the march of nations he says babylon you're going to be around for a while, right? So we're dating Babylon here from the from the time of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, right? So 605 to 539 BC. Of course, Nebuchadnezzar didn't reign that full period, but beginning at 605, roughly. But ending in 539. Because Daniel, through the revelation of God, told the king, your kingdom's not going to last forever. There's another kingdom that's going to come and get you. And it's going to be the Medes and the Persians. That's the, the brass or the, the silver arms and chest. 539 to 331 BC. And then after that was Greek. The Greek kingdom, Greece, under Alexander the Great. They came and destroyed or took over Medo-Persia, who took over Babylon in 331. And they lasted until 168 BC. And then finally, taking over Greece was pagan Rome. 168 BC to 476 AD, roughly. All right. So the breakup of pagan Rome, the rise of European powers came after 476 AD, and they've lasted until the current day. Some of them, some of the European powers that were around after the breakup of Rome, have been destroyed. Three particular groups, but we we can get into that in another video. All right. I cover that in another video. So, Daniel 7 is Daniel 2 told differently with more information. So, Babylon 605 to 539 is in Daniel 7, the winged lion. It's not Trump, it's Babylon, the kingdom of Babylon. All right? And then you have the bear, which is Medo Persia. And then you have the four winged leopard and four headed leopard, which is Greece. 
And then you have the terrible beast, which is Rome. Then you have Papal Rome. That's right. Papal Rome comes after Pagan Rome. Pagan Rome is destroyed by, or at least its power is taken away by 476 AD. And Papal Rome comes into the vacuum. And at the end, of course, is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, we're not at the second coming yet. Jesus has not returned yet. So we are in between the rise of Papal Rome and the second coming. And Papal Rome is that falling away. That is the falling away. The man of sin is the papacy, is the popes. He is the son of perdition. He is the one that stands in the temple of God saying that he is God. We're going to see that in a minute. Friends, scripture twisting really is lying. Uh, Trump cannot be the Antichrist. Daniel 7, 4 is talking about Babylon, a kingdom that has not existed for around 2,563 years. It's not Donald Trump. It's an ancient kingdom. So you cannot apply uh, Daniel 7, 4 to Trump. That is ridiculous. The creator of the video only quotes part of Daniel 7, 4 because eventually the lion's wings are plucked and it's given a man's heart and it is succeeded by another kingdom, which is the bear. So, if Trump is the Antichrist, if Trump is the lion of Daniel 7, 4, well, he's taken over by a bear, by a succeeding kingdom. How can Trump be the Antichrist when it would mean then that some other figure would come after him? And then two more figures after that. And then the ten horns. And then the little horn. Ridiculous. This immediately disqualifies Trump or any other modern political figure from being the Antichrist. This is what it does. This kind of irresponsible Bible exposition is inexcusable, it is dangerous, and it is an outright lie. All right, it's an outright lie. Friends, look at these people. Look at these people. You may not like some of them, but none of them are the Antichrist. Not one. They may, they may uh, go along with the spirit of Antichrist, for sure. They may hold some doctrines of the Antichrist, maybe. I don't know, I'm not speaking for them. I've talked about some of these people in some of my other videos. But uh, none of these are the Antichrist. You see, friends, Jesus warned us of false Christs. He said, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. There will be many that will come and claim to be Christians, Yet they will bring false doctrines and so deceive many. Jesus isn't saying that there's going to be a lot of people that are going to claim to be Christ himself. There are going to be some. But the vast majority are those that claim to be Christians that say, Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the Lord. I believe in the Lord Jesus. And yet they're speaking heresy. They're speaking things that the Bible never says. The true Antichrist, friends, is revealed. First pagan Rome, then Europe, then papal Rome. That is the march of events. Europe owes more to the Christian faith than most people realize. When the barbarians destroyed the Roman Empire in the West, it was the Christian church that put together the new order called Europe. The underlying concept was Christendom. Well, that's according to this man's perspective. So we're just reading what he's saying because... Catholicism is not Christian. It simply is not. Uh, which united empire and church. It began under Charlemagne in the 8th century, but the Pope slowly assumed more and more power until Innocent III and taught Europe to think of the power of popes as world rulers. Later centuries, however, saw the popes corrupted by power and increasingly militant reformers cry out for change. Well, this is according to this man's view, but you get the idea here that the popes became world world rulers. They viewed themselves as rulers of the world. First, they viewed themselves as rulers of the Christian church, and then having ascended the, the throne of Rome, as pagan Rome fell, they ascended. The popes as God on earth? What do they say about themselves? Well, they let other people talk, but they don't deny it. Take care that we lose not that salvation, that life and breath, which thou hast given us. This is speaking, this is a man speaking about a pope. For thou art our shepherd, thou art our physician, thou art our governor, thou art our husbandman, thou art finally another God on earth. 
Christopher Marcellus, an oration addressing Pope Julius II in the Fifth Lateran Council, 1512. This is how they view themselves. This is how the popes view themselves. This is the one who sits in the temple of God, saying that he is God. It's the popes. It's not any modern political figure. Antichrist has been around for centuries. For centuries. And Antichrist has been revealed. The man of sin has fallen away. The son of perdition is revealed. And this son of perdition, what does it say? And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And here is the Pope. Now, he's not sitting in the temple of God, but he's sitting in the U.S. Congress. This man is not just a religious figure. He is a head of state. And they're allowing a foreign head of state, who is also the head of the Catholic Church, into their Congress to address them. This is a monumental event. This is America prepared to speak as a dragon. America prepared to give homage to the Antichrist. The beast from the earth in Revelation 13 is apostate Protestantism, is America. And it is giving homage to the beast here. And the world and all these people are clapping. Yay, the Pope is here. What a wonderful speech. Friends, there's a, there's a one-party system in the world. No matter how many political systems there are in your country, there's only a one-party system. It's the Pope system. Not everyone here may know it. But that's what it is. It's the Pope system. And the Pope system is the Antichrist system. Now, why don't people believe the truth about the Antichrist? Why don't they want to believe it? To come to the truth that the papacy is the Antichrist, the sea beast of Revelation 13, is to be forced to acknowledge that the mark of the beast is Sunday sacredness. That's one of the reasons why people don't want to believe. I'm not talking about people who don't know. But when you tell them, they don't want to believe. They don't want to believe because that would mean people have to make a decision and change their lives. It requires that people give up the false doctrines of Sunday sacred, Sunday rest, salvation by works, immortality of the soul, and make a huge change in their lives. To come to the truth about the Antichrist is to meet the cross of Christ, that is to give up the world and to live for Jesus and the truth. This is a sacrifice that most of the world will not make but they will be destroyed for siding with the man of sin. Friends, we have a decision to make. It's not about hating political figures. Yes, some of them are very evil. Some of them are worthy of God's judgment, and he will judge for the things that they've done. But you can hate a political figure, and, uh, and you can even rightly despise uh, their actions, some of them. But you can still be on the wrong side of God's judgment. Because to be saved is not to hate political figures. To be saved is to love Jesus. And some of these political figures may even turn. Nebuchadnezzar turned. Evil King Manasseh turned. They turned to Christ. I was a heathen. And I turned to Christ. So there's hope. And these men and women who are in politics need to know that Jesus does love them. Some of them may have already entered into the deep things of Satan and have connected themselves in a way that they don't know how to extricate themselves. But I will tell you that Jesus has a way for you. He has a way out if you turn to him. But you must do it now. You must do it now because the time is ticking. God is getting his people ready. God is sifting among his people and his people are becoming ready to follow through on the last day events. Friends, follow Christ, not Antichrist. Paul said, regarding the cross of Christ, regarding the things that we have to give up and go through, the persecutions and trials, this is what Paul said, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Paul did suffer the loss of everything in his life. And do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. You see, Paul didn't regret the things that he lost. Did he lose time? Did he lose money? Did he lose prestige? 
rubbish. It's nothing to him because he gained Jesus. If you lose a hundred dollars, but you gain a billion dollars, are you going to think about that hundred? Well, some people do. In fact, this is why the world will follow the Antichrist because most people will will hang on to that hundred even though they're promised a billion. They don't want to lose the hundred. Friends, we're going to lose everything following Jesus, but we're going to gain everything too. We're going to gain even more than the thing that we lost. We'll lose, we'll lose a penny and gain a trillion. And that's not even really comparing what we're going to have and receive. And I'm just not talking about going to heaven and having wealth or living in a nice place. I'm talking about the very presence of God where the angels love to dwell and sit and behold Jesus Christ and are happy just to praise his holy name. That is where we're going. It's a place of such beauty, such love and such peace that we don't understand it on this earth because we don't live in such a place. We live in a place of strife and evil and wickedness and we think we don't, we can't barely conceive of what it is for heaven. Those that have seen visions of heaven, one of my favorite authors, when she saw a vision of heaven, she didn't want to come back to the dark world. She didn't want to come back. She knew she was in vision, but she did not want to come back to this dark world. She wanted to stay. All friends were going to that place. But Paul says, And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And that's what gets us there. The righteousness which is of God by faith. And Paul said that this, this is worth everything. Every sacrifice that you have to make, whether by pain or persecution, whether by trial, whether by disease or death or any other thing, whether having to refuse the doctrines of Antichrist, follow Christ, not Antichrist. And the, there is nothing better in this world or in the next than Jesus. Don't follow Antichrist, friends. Follow Jesus Christ. Come and walk with the humble shepherd of your soul. Find peace and rest where sinners so desperately need. Stop saying silly things that Trump is the Antichrist or Obama is the Antichrist or that the chip or some injection or this and that is the mark of the beast. No, we know what this is. I've done many videos on this. But you can watch these videos here if you haven't seen them where I go through Antichrist exposed. I expose the Antichrist in much greater detail than in this video. And here you'll be able to see and tell who the Antichrist is, what he's about, and how to avoid his doctrines, his doctrines of devils. Friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you and be with you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this time together. I pray that my audience would be blessed. And I pray that those who hear my voice and hear these videos and listen and watch would also be encouraged to follow Christ, not any Christ. Whatever cross Lord Jesus is before us, well, we're there with you, Lord. And let us hold on to you and you to us and never let us go. And take us one day where you are, that we might come to that blessed land and be relieved of all our suffering and pain here. Help people understand and make the right choice. Help them to see that politics is not our salvation, but only the politics of heaven, the government of heaven. That is where we should be aligned. And our votes should be for you, O Lord Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, thank you for listening. Remember that we are not paid by YouTube. Uh, we do not, uh, our channel is not monetized and we appreciate any help financially or otherwise that you can bring to this channel so we can continue bringing you programming and bring you the truth. Well, we'll see you next time. God bless and take care. Bye now. Mm -hmm.